Okay folks, welcome back to Wooden Toolman's channel. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is just give you a quick little update on the uh, power feeder and the progress that I've made. So if you haven't seen my videos before, then I highly suggest that you have a look at my little power feeder that I made for the router. Um, what this does, it just makes it so that stuff will actually pull tight, pull through, and this thing holds it down. And uh, you know, it does all the work, it takes all the, uh, the danger out of feeding stuff through the router. Um, but this particular unit used some pretty expensive parts. There's an expensive gearbox in there, and there's a bunch of little uh, bearings and, and such in this machine. And uh, the little wheels, the little rubber wheels are hard to get a hold of too. So what I'm uh, attempting to do is to make an ultra cheap uh, version of this. Something that everybody uh, with a very little bit of gear is going to be able to afford to build. And uh, you know, it should do uh, exactly the same thing. That's what my uh, my uh, aim is. So what I'm going to do is just show you uh, just how far I've got with this thing. So this is actually going to be... Uh, the gearbox or something very similar now this is just a mock-up version of course but what it does is just takes one of these 1725 motors and makes it so that it slows it down enough that you could actually use it for a feeder and, and you know so far I've got about maybe 25 bucks into this minus the motor because most people do have some sort of these motors laying around so I'm just going to grab my uh, my tripod here and set my camera up on it so I can get myself hands free here to be able to show you just what I've got done here so far. Uh, now this thing is pretty straightforward and you know it's going to require some testing of course but we'll just have to wait and see just how durable this is but you know my initial feeling is is that this is going to stand up very well and it's going to be super super cheap to make. So. I'm just going to take it apart is actually what I'm going to do. Um, this chain too went through a flood, so it's all rusty, so i got to pick up a new length of this chain. This is something that pretty much anybody can afford. You know, it's pretty inexpensive. So, uh, what I've got done here is, uh, I'll just take one of these right apart. So, I actually threaded this little wooden wheel is what I did. Um, and I did some tests before this to see how much torque this was only going to be able to handle. Um, just being threaded on like this and you know what this is going to handle any amount of torque that this little feeder is going to uh, throw its way so to say so uh, so it's just threaded on there and then what I did was I just drilled a hole through this MDF so this piece is about somewhere is about three and a half or four inches wide I just drilled a 3 8 hole through it sprayed it good with WD-40 when I was done and you know then this bolt runs through. So there's what I'm going to run for a shaft. I'm not even going to put bearings in this thing because I think this thing will take forever to wear this out. You know how, uh, you know, it's a smooth shaft. It's running on hard, hard MDF material. It's going to take forever to wear out. And even if it did get a little wee bit of play in it, it's still not going to hurt anything. And it just makes it super easy to build. You just got to drill a hole through a block of MDF. Now the part that, uh, that I did, as you can see here, it's wider at the back than it is at the front and there's a reason for that it's because when this thing is used as a fence these little wheels actually have to be tipped toward the fence in order to make the material pull tight because like a car if it was at a alignment it's always going to want to pull toward the ditch that's the same thing as these by just taking a little bit off the, this side the shafts run straight through to keep my chains nice and straight and then uh, I just narrowed this up. Well, that's going to, when I, when I mount this to a fence, it's always going to have the material. It's going to be pushing uh, toward the fence, you could see. So the material is going to be running through on these wheels. Well, it's a lot closer uh, at the front than it is at the back. This one's spaced out, so it's going to cause it to always track toward the fence, which is what we want. We don't want to have to push it in, neither. We want it to do it itself. So, you know, just drill the simple hole. Um, you know, these little sprockets, they're pretty cheap. You can find them around. Princess Auto uh, was a spot that I found them. Uh, you know, they're a couple of bucks a piece or something like that. And then, uh, you know, you have to buy the little hubs for them. So, you know, you're going to have to pick up some parts. But these are, these should be real easy to get. So then I just cut a simple circle out, threaded it with my bolt. So then this will thread on now. I guess I'm going to put a washer on it first. I guess I had three on this side and two on the back side, so that's how much difference there is. So then this will just thread on. Now I guess if this was threaded on and off a whole bunch of times, 
then it might wear them threads out. But if you're careful putting it on the first time, get it nice and even, uh, then it threads on nice and straight. Then the thread should last for a few times. But once we get this together, we're not going to have to take it apart a whole bunch of times. So just get that so it's just a little bit of play left in it. And then just tighten a nut down on it is what I'm going to do. So then if I tighten that up with my wrench, now that stops that from moving. So now, I guess unless I turn it the wrong way, so tighten it up. So this is how my other feeder was done too. I actually got some of these little rubber wheels and got somebody to tap them. Um, and then I can just screw them onto my shaft and then put a nut to tighten it. But it was quite expensive to get them bored and then these little rubber casters are actually pretty hard to get. So I'm going to try a version without them. So, so there, that gets that so that I've got them two uh, running in parallel. Now I just have to get a chain hooked up to these two. And I guess I'm going to have to get a longer bolt too to be able to put another pulley on this because then that would run to my drive. Uh, and then that would then it would turn them together, as you can see. So now, uh, I know that this just running on the wood would not grab the wood and, and make it so that you could pull it through. So what I'm going to do is I've got some little strips of sandpaper around here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to uh, glue these to the little wooden wheels. And then that'll make it so that the material won't slip. And if we're just using, you know, most of the time we're just going to be using wood that we're going to route or sand anyway. This is not going to hurt it. I need to have this little sandpaper. Um, it, you know, it might leave a little wee mark, but we're going to sand it anyway, so it's not going to be that important uh, to be able to do that. So then just uh, get one of these on either side, then that's going to be what pulls the material through. So like I said, this is just an update video to show you that uh, little bit of progress that I'm making on this. Get you thinking, and hopefully get you excited about Wooden Toolman's channel. Get you excited enough, maybe even push that like button for me, and... Uh, and you'll keep getting videos just like this. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.